Hi, my name is Michael Swartz. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to animate a bouncing ball. This rig that I've made has two main controls. The arrow control here has controls for moving and rotation, and this control in the middle controls the squash and stretch attribute. And uh, so let's just demonstrate this. This can move around and so on and rotate. And then this controller right here has a squash and stretch attribute. And if you click on the name and then middle mouse left and right in the viewport, you can control the value as though it was an interactive slider. You can also move this squash and stretch control anywhere you like and you can rotate it as well. So if I move it down to the floor here, and then select squash and stretch and middle mouse left and right, you can see that it now has a pivot point on the floor. And likewise, I could angle it. Let's say it was gonna bounce off of a wall or something. I could angle it like this and then activate the squash and stretch by middle mouse dragging left and right. And you can see it is now squishing at an angle. I'm going to zero out all of these attributes for all of the controls. So I'll just select all of the controls by dragging across them and then dragging down the list of uh, values here and just pressing zero and return. And that resets all of the parameters. This rig happens to have 13 keyable attributes. And I've made a character set, uh, which is basically just a collection of keyable attributes. And you can turn that on down here. The benefit of doing this is that um, you'll only have to press the S key to automatically key all of the keyable attributes for the entire rig. So if I hit S right now, even with nothing selected, you can see down here it's keyed 13 attributes. It's telling us here in the status, uh, the status field. All right, the other thing that I'd like to point out before we actually start animating is the um, help line here. Okay, so the help tips, if you're not sure what a button does, um, look down here in the bottom left corner and uh, it will describe what uh, the icon should do or how the tool works. And also over here on the right side, there are two buttons I wanna talk to you about. Uh, the first one right here is auto key. When auto key is active, as it is right now, that means that if there's already a key set on a specific attribute, it will, and then you move it down later in the timeline, it will automatically set a key for those attributes that already have keys. So let's say I set a key here, and then I move over to frame six in my timeline, and I move my object, it just added a keyframe automatically. That's how auto keyframe works. And if I happen to be um, working without the auto keyframe on, and I was to move out to frame six and move it, um, it did not set a keyframe. And if I try to advance the frame anywhere, it snaps back to the last keyframed position. Another thing that's very important to understand is the animation playback speed. And that's available in the preference button over here. And I'm gonna just make sure that under the time slider, I have it set to play real time. I'm working with 24 frames a second right now, uh, but you can change that if you wanted to animate it, let's say 30 frames per second, which is common for a broadcast. Then you would go up here to the settings and then change the time right here to NTSC 30 frames per second or whatever else you would like to use. You can use a custom value as well. Okay, let's uh, start animating. I'm gonna turn on my auto key button and I'm gonna change the first position of this ball to be about eight centimeters high or grid units high. So we're on frame one. And now I'm gonna forward over to frame seven and bring that back down to zero. Okay, so right now you can actually scrub back and forth and see that we uh, have set two keyframes and Maya is interpolating in between those two frames. Then I'm gonna go over to frame 13 and bring this back up to eight. Another uh, important shortcut to know about is how to quickly copy a frame. You can right click on a keyframe and copy and paste and so on and delete. You can also uh, go to the frame and then middle mouse 
on the timeline frame where you want to go and then hit S and that essentially copies the position and attributes from the first frame to frame 13. So now we have our animation and if we play it back uh, by using this play button in the timeline you can see that it has some space at the end of the animation here. So I'm going to crop that out by changing the playback range to go from frame 1 to 13. And now if I rewind and play, this is what we have. Okay, so right now the animation uh, has some issues with uh, spacing, and spacing is basically the uh, distance between the drawings or the um, or interpolated objects. Uh, and it can give you effects like easing in and easing out, and you can give animations more power by having the animations be linear. Um, and one way to view the spacing interactively within Maya is by selecting the object. So I'm going to go into my ball group here and select the ball geometry. And then up here in the upper left in the shelf in the animation tab, there's a shortcut for uh, showing ghosted uh, displays of the object. So I'm going to click on that uh, button there. And Maya is calculating some of the interstitial frames. And you can see as I play forward, it's showing me the spacing between the frames. And uh, you can see that at the top here, it has a, a tightly packed spacing. It's, it's a little closer together than these other two frames down here. And uh, you can see that in the graph editor as well. Let's take a look at that. You're, as an animator, you're going to spend most of your time actually in the graph editor. So to get to the graph editor, you go up to Windows Animation Editor Graph Editor. OK, this is one way you can get at that window. And another one is there's a Panels menu here inside the viewport. And you can go to Panel and then load up the graph editor, which is here at the top. OK, and another one is there's a preset over here. So this preset right here will display the uh, perspective view as well as the uh, graph editor below. I'm going to turn off the ghosting by pressing that button there. And then with this um, ball control shape uh, the, with the arrows selected, uh, you can see that it's it only really has changes on one value, the translate Y. That's this green line here. So if you select translate Y, it will isolate, select only this in the graph editor. X is red, Y is green, and translate Z is blue. So with this translate Y, as the animation goes forward, you can see it goes down. And so translate Y is really perhaps one of the most easy to understand uh, translations in the graph editor because it really correlates to what you see in the viewport. So right here you can see that the value is high and so is the object. And if you want to scrub inside the viewport or in the graph editor, you can hold down the K key and left mouse to scrub back and forth. And you can do that anywhere either in the viewport here up at the top or down here in the graph editor. To navigate around the graph editor, you use the same controls that you do in the other viewport windows. What I want to do is I want to break this tangent here so that instead of the ball slowly slowing down as it approaches the floor, I want it to just have a, a relatively constant, uh, even accelerating descent toward the floor. And then as it hits the floor, it bounces away with a lot of energy. Right now, that's not happening. It's very, it's kind of slowly slowing down and then slowly increasing acceleration as it leaves the floor. So let's break this tangent. You can just drag across it and then go up to the tangent menu and either choose break tangents from here, or you can use the shortcut, which is this button right here. Okay, so once you've selected that, um, we can use the move tool over here or W for the shortcut key. And I'm going to just 
drag middle mouse drag that up so as the ball is you know losing its um, battle against gravity it has a very uh, dramatic acceleration toward the floor and then this one over here same deal I'm going to select that handle and middle mouse up to also create a very dramatic you know um, escape from the floor and perhaps this one is a little too strong let's just bring that down a little bit but this one I want to have it be a little bit more dramatic there we go okay I'm gonna hit the space bar to view just the perspective view here and, and option V to play okay so that's a basic ball setup now let's talk about squash and stretch I'm gonna hit space bar again uh, to bring up my two perspective and graph editor view okay to add the squash and stretch we may have to change the timing a little bit to make all of this work but basically what I want to have happen is as it uh, hits the ground the next frame is going to be is going to be squashed so I'm going to move I play back head to frame 8 and uh, actually I'm going to move it to frame 7 and then I'm going to uh, hold down the K key and middle mouse to frame 8 and what that does is it doesn't update the scene and I can use the, that trick to set a key automatically so once again I, I use my K and left mouse button to go to 7 and then I hold down K and middle mouse drag to frame 8 and then I can press the S key and you can see it set the same values as its previous key but there's a problem if you look at this closely the um, tangent here has gotten out of whack because it's still uh, trying to bounce it the way I had done previously so I'm going to grab that uh, handle here and just flatten it out okay and then we need to on frame 8 we need to also move the I'm going to hit space bar to go into this view and zoom in a little bit closer I'm going to move this squash and stretch value to minus one okay and I'm also going to increase the um, the squishing factor or actually decrease the value so it squishes into the floor and maybe it's it's a, a two-step process like right there it's something like that but if we advance a frame to let's say frame 9 and I, I did that with my middle mouse button so it doesn't update the scene on hit S now I'll just squash it a little bit more let's take a look at this from a distance and it looks like the squashing and stretching is happening before I want it to so I need to um, make sure that on frame 1 squash and stretch is set to 0 frame 7 it should also be set to 0 uh, but frame 8 uh, that uh, should be set to minus 1 for translate y and squash and stretch is minus 2, 0.2 and then point minus 0.4 for the next frame okay so let's do a little bit more work on the uh, the bounce back as it bounces back up we need to have the squash and stretch behave correctly as well so I'm gonna just copy the frame here from frame 8 so I'm gonna uh, right click on that and just copy it and then go to frame 10 and paste and uh, you know actually I'm gonna do frame 7 instead so I'm gonna go to frame 7 right click on that copy it go to frame 10 and paste and I'm gonna hit the S key on that okay let's take a look at this So I think that there's probably an extra frame in here that we don't need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this frame 8. So I'm going to uh, right click on that and just select delete. 
And now to move these keyframes, it's really a lot easier to move these things in the graph editor, but you can move them in the timeline by just left mouse clicking on or dragging uh, and then holding the shift key to select a keyframe. And then you can move it using these two middle arrows. And I'm gonna move 10 over as well to frame nine. All right, on frame 11, I'm gonna select the squash and stretch value and I'm gonna stretch it upward. Not too much, but just a little bit. All right. Let's turn off the controllers here down in the layer window here. I'm going to turn off the ball control layer. And now hit option V to play it forward. Okay, maybe it needs a little more time. I'm going to add one more frame. So I'm going to change my playback range to 14 and move frame 13 over to 14. Okay, it's very stylized, but that's the basic setup. If you wanna make additional adjustments to this, I encourage you to work in the graph editor. So if you select this control or the squash and stretch control and go to your graph editor preset here. I'm going to just take a look at this and make sure that it's all clean, uh, which it looks like it's not. This particular uh, setup right here, I need to flatten those tangents. I don't want this uh, little val uh, mountain here. So I'm going to flatten that tangent by going to tangents and then uh, flat. Uh, but this tangent right here, I'm going to break it. So select that, go to tangents, break tangents. Again, there are shortcut keys for these, and the um, status line down here for help will tell you what they all do. So this is broken now, and I'm going to select that uh, handle on the right, and using my move tool, we'll middle mouse up. Okay. And now let's rewind. So Option, Shift, V. On the PC, it would be Alt, Shift, V and Alt V or Option V to play. And let's turn off the curves there. If your machine is having you know, difficulty playing this back uh, really smoothly, uh, you can try um, turning on default textures. So if you go to the shading menu up here in the viewport menu, uh, go to shading and then use default material and that will take some of the burden off of the graphics card. I hope this was helpful.